Travel back in time with a trip inside the Iowa's News Now vault. The two officers, 27-year-old Wayne Rice and 28-year-old Michael Hoeing, were called to 1027 Franklin Street shortly before midnight. There had been a complaint that music was being played loudly, creating a disturbance. According to a witness, the officers went to the door once and asked the occupants to turn the music down. Then they returned to their squad car. Again, according to the witness, when the music was not turned down, the officers went back to the front door. When they did, a fight broke out, and then the shots were fired. And when other officers arrived from the police station, which is just three blocks down the street, they found officers Rice and Hoeing shot. Both died from the gunshot wounds. Other officers responding to the scene found both officers shot. The officers were taken to Allen Hospital by ambulance, and both officers died from the gunshot wounds. The dead officers are Officer Wayne Rice, age 27, assigned to third shift as a patrol officer. Officer Rice joined the department in 1978. Officer Michael Hoyne, age 28, assigned to third shift as a patrol officer. Officer Hoyne joined the department in 1974. Police, who have been tight-lipped about the shooting, were thought to be looking for three men, Howard and Johnny Lee Fams as witnesses, Howard was picked up this afternoon, and James Michael Taylor, also known as T-Bone, as the prime suspect. And I'd like to say last, but certainly not least, that in this case, justice cannot be swift enough or severe enough to compensate for the deed that was committed last night. Barry Butters, 2 Action News, Waterloo. Around 5 a.m., LaPorte City Police found this car abandoned in the front yard of a farmhouse along Highway 218. Within minutes, dozens of Waterloo police surrounded the home, believing murder suspect James Taylor was inside. Trooper 86 to you. Any uh, Waterloo officer at the site of the car on 218? Uh, go ahead, 86. But after a tense search, police did not find Taylor. An hour and 15 minutes later, a farm wife spots the suspect walking along this road. With daylight as an aid, police use helicopters to help in looking for the suspect. Farm buildings are searched, the fields scoured, but no sign of the suspect. A farm is taken over and made into a mobile command post. With an armed suspected murderer lurking in the fields, radio communications with the command post become very important. Doc, is you pulling out of that farm? Comfort from Beckman on Ford. The air search is intensified in the afternoon with three helicopters nosing into the cornfields while two airplanes survey a broader area. Shortly before noon, police decide to go into the corn. Two detasseling machines are found and shotgun-wielding police ride them grimly through the cornfields, aware that they are perfect targets framed by the eight-foot-high corn and the summer sky. More men are summoned, hound dogs used to sniff the ground, more helicopters hurled into the sky. It looks glamorous and exciting, but it is hard, hot work, and it is frustrating. Despite the efforts of more than 70 police and all the equipment, no signs of the suspect emerge. The terrain offers many hiding spots and avenues of escape. As the temperatures climbed into the 90s, onlookers wondered how anyone could lie in a humid cornfield all day. Police knew the answer to that question. The suspect had no alternative. Bill George, 2 Action News, near LaPorte City. Apprehended this afternoon, 27-year-old Joseph Fams of Waterloo. Fams has not been charged, but was brought before Waterloo police detectives for questioning. He is believed to be a material witness to the shootings and is being held on $50,000 bond. Joe Fams and his brother Howard were allegedly here at the scene last night, where two Waterloo police officers, Wayne Rice and Michael Hoying, were shot to death. The trigger man is allegedly James T-Bone Taylor, and he's believed to be hiding from a police manhunt in these fields near Mount Auburn. Taylor has a prior criminal record that includes a 1978 stabbing in Davenport. He served time at Fort Madison and in an Illinois prison. Taylor was paroled from Illinois in March of this year. Police will say little about FAMS, only that he's being held for questioning. His brother Howard has been released. John Okerstrom, 2 Action News, Waterloo. In Waterloo today, flags flew at half-mast. Mayor Leo Roof had proclaimed it a day of mourning for the slain officers, Michael Hoeing and Wayne Rice. Both men, who were in their late 20s, left behind wives and young children. Police say there have been so many requests by people wanting to donate money to the families that they are going to establish a memorial fund. 
but details of that fund have not been worked out by late this afternoon. The house at 1027 Franklin, where the two men were gunned down late Sunday night, continues to be roped off and manned by police. The two were killed with Rice's service revolver, which was stolen during a fight that occurred when the officers responded to a report of loud music. Services for both men are being coordinated so officers can attend both funerals. Services for Rice are scheduled for 11 a.m. tomorrow at Sacred Heart Catholic Church and for hoeing at 2.30 at Grace Baptist. Barry Butters, 2 Action News, Waterloo. It was a long, frustrating day of false alarms. The first sighting of what people think was murder suspect James Taylor came around midnight when farmer Dave Forbes saw his truck moving. Well, I was going upstairs and I heard my truck backing up the driveway, so I ran downstairs and looked out the door and it was just about in front of the house up there, so I grabbed my pistol that was right by the door and I fired twice at him right in front of the house and then when he got up on the road I shot again and he jumped out of the truck with it in gear and it took off down the road and went in the ditch and he ran off into the cornfield and I really never got a good look at him. Police sealed the area off and this morning the search intensified. Police from as far away as Davenport helped search the roads and fields. At the field command post, plans were coordinated and strategy mapped. Go there right now and set up. The dog should be there in 10 minutes or so. The chopper will be up in a short time. At 10.45 in the morning, a farm wife and her son say they see a black man walking through this cornfield near the command post. But a search finds nothing. A lull in the activity, then at 2.20, Two farm boys say they spotted a black man walking along a creek in their farm. 12-year-old Matt Foster is airlifted, but after a thorough search of the cornfield, nothing is found. How far in the field was he when you saw him? It was the first dip out. It was a dip like a creek, but only it was like a, it was where a fence post was going on. Was he in a hurry? No, didn't look like it. Did he have a gun? But the worst thing to befall the search operation occurred shortly before 4 this afternoon when a carload of police officers collided with a civilian car. Blackhawk County Deputy Sheriff William Mulliken died in the wreck, and the search was scrubbed for the day. Bill George, 2 Action News in southern Blackhawk County. Law officers gathered in front of the Waterloo Police Station this morning. They came from all parts of the state. They met at the station to go en masse to the funerals of two Waterloo policemen who were gunned down late Sunday night. The first service was for 27-year-old Wayne Rice. An overflow crowd of nearly a thousand jammed the Sacred Heart Catholic Church. During a homily, Father Dale Rausch praised Rice for his dedication and friendly, approachable attitude. He said he joined the police force knowing the danger, thus willingly made the supreme sacrifice. Father Rausch said society has the right to feel saddened by the deaths of the two officers, but he said we must not be pessimistic. Rice, who left behind a wife and two young children, was buried at the Garden of Memory Cemetery. Services for 28-year-old Michael Hoeing were held shortly after at the Grace Baptist Church. At the request of the minister, cameras remained outside. But Pastor Howard Collins told family members and fellow law officers that the vast majority of society does care about and appreciate the job police officers do. Hoeing also left behind a wife and two young children. He was buried at Memorial Park Cemetery. As many as four to 500 police officers attended the two funerals. And what is it that brought all of the officers who may or may not have known Rice and Hoeing? I asked an officer from Muscatine. Well, it's a brotherhood between the police officers. Uh, you band together in times of trouble and that sometimes you get the feeling that the uh, citizens out there don't care about you and that if you need people and need help, it's the fellow police officers that you go to and you can be rest assured that they'll be there when you need them. Hammer says he knows the work that he and his fellow officers do in Muscatine is not appreciated. He says his only hope is that the tragedy that occurred here will make Waterloo residents thankful for the police force they have. Barry Butters, 2 Action News, Waterloo. The mourners jammed Sacred Heart Catholic Church at 11 a.m. for 27-year-old Wayne Rice's funeral. Rice's widow, supported by Patrolman Association President Larry Thompson, was escorted into the church along with other grieving family members. After the church service, the casket was taken to Garden of Memory Cemetery. Rice was praised as a friendly officer who went about his duty knowing it was a dangerous job. Within minutes after the ceremony, most of the mourners had left for the second funeral of the day. Rice's casket was left for burial. 
The scene was the same at Grace Baptist Church, where services were held for 28-year-old Michael Hoeing. Another trip to the cemetery, another young widow grieving, more eulogies. The tight-lipped expressions of the law enforcement officers told what they were thinking. The last function of the day was a reception here at the United Auto Workers Hall, where hundreds of police showed up. Why did they come? It's our way of paying tribute to our fallen brother. What goes through your mind at, uh, at something like this? Well, many things can go through your mind. Uh, that could be, that could have been me. Uh, that can be any police officer. And you th things roll through your mind like maybe close calls that one or other of you have had over the past. And you think of, uh, you know, tomorrow could be your turn too. So the day ended with some food and talk of troubled times and etched in the minds of many officers will be scenes from a hot Sunday night in July when two young police officers were gunned down when they answered a call about a loud stereo. Bill George, 2 Action News, Waterloo. The drama began here around 12.30 at a house on the outskirts of LaPorte City. A man identified as James T-Bone Taylor allegedly broke into this home. Two women, one identified as Laura Fultz, went into the abandoned home to change a light. Neighbor Luella Teetsworth tells what happened next. I saw this lady running up through the yard and she was waving her hand, help. And I didn't think too much about it. I just uh, sat there and watched. And pretty soon uh, she just kept hollering. So I ran out the door. And uh, she says, help, help. And I says, well, what's the matter? And she says, that black guy is over there in my house. And I says, where? And so she pointed over there, uh, the house that they own. And uh, so I went in the house real quick like and called the police and called twice. The line was busy. So I says, come on, we'll jump in the car, I'll take you up there. So I took her up to the police station. Taylor then allegedly stole a car, leaving the alleged murder weapon on the ground. Taylor got east of LaPorte City when he rolled this yellow car into the ditch. Police then made the arrest. They spotted a man in the field, a black man in a bean field, and they immediately started to uh, surround this bean field to keep the man from going into a cornfield that was adjacent to the bean field. Uh, it was at this time that uh, the, the defendant uh, uh, raised his hands and walked out uh, to Officer Messerschmidt, who placed him under arrest at that time. For Waterloo Police, it was the end of a long search and a time for congratulations. Bill George, 2 Action News, LaPorte City. A large crowd, possibly several hundred, were on hand to view the murder suspect. Because of that crowd, police used extreme security measures to ensure Taylor's safety. After police had questioned him, 75 officers were used to get him safely to his initial court appearance. Eight armed officers rode inside a sheriff's department van with Taylor. Another 20 surrounded the vehicle to be sure it got to the courthouse without incident. At an initial hearing, Taylor's bond was raised to $1 million on each murder count. At a news conference late this afternoon, Assistant Police Chief Larry Dolan described the security. In total, at least with the Waterloo Police Department officers, uh, we used in the neighborhood of 75 officers, uh, some going to LaPorte City, some staying here. And I know that the Sheriff's Department used a great many, a great deal of their deputies also. Do you know offhand how many were inside the van when he was transported? Yes, there were 20 officers surrounding the van and accompanying uh, the van to the, to the uh, Black Hawk County. There were five officers with Taylor inside the van, along with three Sheriff's Department deputies in front. Dolan said the security was necessary for protection of the suspect. And Chief Junior Grimm was obviously relieved that the week-long ordeal had ended. I am elated that uh, the capture came off as professionally as it did and I would certainly want to thank all the law enforcement agencies who assisted and the public support we've had on this it's been a trying week we're very happy with the outcome coming on a Friday on a, on a week that has been a very trying week for our officers an arraignment for Taylor is scheduled for July 27th Barry Butters to Action News Waterloo he entered the courtroom looking unconcerned. James Michael Taylor, charged with two counts of first-degree murder, was handcuffed, and his feet were chained as well. The sheriff's deputies were taking no chances. And Taylor is accused of killing Waterloo police officers Wayne Rice and Michael Hoeing.
the charge of murder in the first degree counts one and two under section 707.2 of the Code of Iowa. And under a plea of not guilty to both counts, request the matter be set up for trial. Davidson also reserved the right to waive a jury trial at some future date. And though no mention was made of it this morning, Davidson is expected to seek a change of venue out of Black Hawk County. Publicity surrounding the case has been extensive, and Davidson feels his client would not get a fair trial in Waterloo. In an information filed with the court yesterday, County Attorney Dave Carell referred to a statement from Ernest Fams, who lives in this house where the killings occurred. Fams said he saw Taylor shoot the two officers. Two other Fams brothers are also alleged to have seen the shooting. Joseph and Johnny Fams are being held as material witnesses in the case. Barry Butters to Action News, Waterloo.